The Detroit Lions are 5-1 of the year after a 20-6 win over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Week 6 and through 6 weeks. They are 4th in points per game offensively and 9th in points allowed per game defensively. The start of this season for the Lions has been a couple of years in the making, but now that they are here, they are a problem. And over the past few years, they have done a good job rebuilding what was a not great roster, and they have done things the right way. General Manager Brad Holmes started his Lions career with a decision that could have ended his tenure with the Lions just as easily as it started in a trade that sent former franchise quarterback Matthew Stafford to the Los Angeles Rams. But since then, they have hit on pick after pick, and as crazy as this sounds, they will be competing for a chance to go to the Super Bowl this year. Will they is a different discussion, but the Lions are here, and they are not only here, but they have set themselves up to compete for a long, long time. And we're going to break down everything in today's video. Now let's begin. And we are starting today's video by discussing what makes the Lions so good, and the short answer is, well, pretty much everything. They rank in the top half of the NFL in pretty much every meaningful statistic, and they can beat you in any way they want. They've ran for over 100 yards in every game they've played this year, minus the Bucks game, and even in the Bucks game when the run game wasn't working, all Jared Goff did was throw for 353 yards and two touchdowns, while averaging 8 yards per passing attempt. The Lions ran the ball 22 times in this game against Tampa and had just 40 yards, which is as abysmal as it sounds, as they averaged just 1.8 yards per carry. Yes, they were down to their third string running back, but they didn't panic, and for the 15th time in a row dating back to last season, the Lions put up at least 20 points, and for the fifth time in the 2023 season, they were victorious. And with quarterbacks, there's always narratives around players, and whether or not they're good, great, elite, average, or whatever the case may be, but the reality is Jared Goff is playing great football. He has been a top 10 quarterback in 2023 and is currently on pace for a 4,500 plus yard passing, 31 plus passing touchdown season. And as long as the Lions don't trip up down the stretch of the 2023 season, well, really several times, they will win the NFC North too, and if you follow the channel at all over the past few years, then you know I've been a huge advocate and supporter of what the Lions have done since GM Brad Holmes took over in 2021. And if you were starting with this franchise and controlling it in Madden, and had to do a few off-season simulations over the past few years, it would truly be hard to do better even in a video game than what Brad Holmes has done since taking over. The biggest complaint so far, at least, is spending a first-round pick on running back Jameer Gibbs instead of taking Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter when he was right there, but whether you know this or not, the Lions are first in rushing yards allowed on the year, second in yards per carry allowed, and second in rushing attempts allowed, and the reason why rushing attempts allowed is a big deal is because teams don't even try to run the football against them, and rushing attempts allowed is a statistic that you can't control because it involves the other team's play calling, but if they respect what you're doing that much to the point where they know they're not going to get a lot of yards on a carry, that says something about your team. And through six games, the Lions have allowed 100 yards rushing as a team, a grand total of zero times. And like we mentioned earlier, the Lions have ran for over 100 yards in five of the six games they've played this year. So in order to beat the Lions, you have to pass the ball, and continue to pass the ball, and hope you don't make any mistakes along the way, which can be as simple as a miscommunication, or a receiver dropping a ball leading to a pick six like we saw with Kadarius Tony back in week one, or have your tackle give up a game-changing sack to a pretty good player by the name of Aiden Hutchinson. And when teams pass the ball against the Lions, this plays into what they want you to do. The Lions' game plan entering every week is to bully you with their offensive line, build a lead, and then let their pass rush get after the quarterback. And Aiden Hutchinson at the time of this video release is tied for 12th in the NFL with 4.5 sacks in 6 games. And I don't want to act like that's not an accomplishment in itself because he is currently on pace for a 13 sack season, but I'd be surprised if he doesn't finish with more than 13 sacks because he generates so much pressure and is such a problem for opposing offensive linemen to deal with that while the sacks aren't fully there at the moment, they will be soon. And through five weeks, Aiden Hutchinson was leading the league in pressures. 
but Hutch is not the only player on this defense. Aleem McNeil has played a big part in the run defense, and there's been times already where Brian Branch has been all over the field too, and when the draft was happening, I couldn't understand why Brian Branch was falling, and as simple as this sounds, there were not 30 plus players in the 2023 draft class that were better than Brian Branch, period. And guess what? Six weeks into their careers, that's still true, and I credit GM Brad Holmes for going up and getting Brian Branch, because there was a point in this draft where it looked like Branch was going to fall right into the division rival Packers' laps, and they could have had both Jair Alexander and Brian Branch in their secondary. And as we know, that obviously didn't happen. Linebacker Alex Anzalone has also played well this year, and this all goes back to the question or point of where is the weakness on the Lions roster? And the answer is there is no glaring weakness, and they are a Seattle loss away from starting the year 6-0. They've given up 25 points or more in just one game, and it was the Seattle game. And the big thing with the Lions and how they play games is they will dominate the trenches. More often than not, they will be the ones giving the 14-play, 75-yard, 8-minute drive, rather than being on the receiving end of one of those types of drives. They rank 10th in average time of possession per drive offensively, and 6th in average time of possession per drive defensively, which is huge because you want your defense to stay rested late into the games, and ultimately the season, and the Lions do that almost every single week. And if in the scenario you don't think the Lions are that good, well, there's a chance this team wins 13 games, if not more, as their schedule down the stretch is not hard, with the exception of a few games, and one of them, of course, is Week 7 against the Ravens. If they can beat the Ravens in Week 7 and improve to 6-1, and one, which is very possible for them, by the way, 13 or 14 wins is not out of the equation for the Lions. Their next six weeks are in Baltimore, home against the Raiders on Monday night, followed by a Week 9 bye, then go to LA to play the Chargers, home against the Bears, and home against the Packers, who they already beat by two touchdowns in their stadium. And hypothetically, even if they lose to both the Ravens and Chargers, I still think they will be at minimum 7-3 through 10 games, and the Eagles losing in Week 6 to the Jets really benefits the Lions, and here's why. The Eagles have a murderer's row of opponents coming up, as in a five-game span off of their Week 10 bye, they play in Kansas City, home against Buffalo and San Francisco, followed by games in Dallas and in Seattle. And during this same span, which is weeks 11 through 15, the Lions play the Bears twice, and even play the Broncos in this span too. So if the Lions can squeak out wins over the Ravens and Chargers, guys, just being honest here with how the Lions have played so far, is it really unrealistic to think they could be 11 or 12 and 1 at some point in the year? And please don't think I'm overlooking that week 13 game against the Saints in New Orleans, because I'm not, but the Saints have their own problems, and a big problem is their offensive coordinator, Pete Carmichael. The Lions' final three games are against the Vikings, Cowboys, and the Vikings again, and they can reasonably win those too. Now, I know this part of the video sounds like I'm drinking some Honolulu Blue Kool-Aid, but they can reasonably win 13 or 14 games with this schedule. And unless they have several major injuries, they will enter the month of December with a multiple game division lead, and I'm guessing that they officially clinch the North by the time they play the Vikings in Week 16, and it could even be a week or two early. And what scares me about opponents facing the Lions is despite them being 5-1, they are just getting started. They have one of the best offensive coordinators in all of football, if not the best OC, and that's Ben Johnson. And just being honest here, Ben probably will leave to go be a head coach at the end of the season, as that's how the NFL works, but he has weapons on weapons on weapons to work with in Detroit. This offense can go for 50 plus points in any week, and they've already scored 30 plus points in three of their first six games. They just got back 2020 first round pick Jamison Williams, and in the win over Tampa, he had two catches for 53 yards and a touchdown that effectively sealed the win for the Lions. And that's, of course, without mentioning one of the biggest steals in any of the past few drafts in 2021 fourth round receiver Amon Ross St. Brown. With how many great receivers there are across the NFL, St. Brown sometimes gets forgotten about, but in the five games he's played this year, he has three 100-yard games, 
three touchdowns and the lowest receiving yards total he's had is 56 yards, meaning he is as steady as they come at the receiver position and you know as a defense entering the week, this guy is going to get the football and repeatedly and they still can't stop him. Amon Ra has 455 yards in five games, and I really think he can be a 1400 yard, nine or 10 plus touchdown player. And having Amon Ra and Jamison on the field at the same time to really stretch the defense creates absolute nightmares for opposing defensive coordinators. And this is all with an offensive line that kicks ass and takes names later, and all with a rookie tight end who is playing great football in his own right, and that's 2023 second round pick Sam Laporta. Laporta is currently on pace for a 900 yard, eight touchdown rookie season, which is, well, to be honest, I don't have a word for how impressive that is for a rookie tight end. Hell, any tight end, let alone a rookie. And somebody commented recently about myself giving the Sam Laporta pick a bad draft grade, and the reason I gave the Laporta pick a bad grade wasn't strictly due to Sam. It was due to them taking Laporta over Michael Mayer, who I I thought was a better prospect, but I credit the Lions organization in a big way for developing Laporta and using him the correct way in their offense. And I know that sounds like what they should be doing, but there's times where teams simply don't get players the football as much as they should. But the Lions are doing exactly that with Sam. They're fourth in points per game and fourth in yards through six weeks without using their first round pick in Jameer Gibbs anywhere close to the level they could. When this team is on offensively, they are a problem for everyone, and the Lions are very much Super Bowl contenders. Why I like the Lions so much is because they can beat you any way they want. Having Jamison Williams on the field, not even him going for three catches for 125 yards and a touchdown, but just having him as a threat on the field changes how defenses play the Lions. They have to play more conservatively and cannot dial up as many blitzes as they want and send as much pressure as they want because if they do, well, send Jamison on a drag or a slant or anything and see if anybody can catch him. And spoiler, they won't. So having him out there forces defenses into a too high shell, which means there's less bodies in the box to help in the run game, and in turn, will only help David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs in the long run, and the offensive line for that matter too. One of the only ways to beat this team is to have an absolutely suffocating pass rush and front four, <clears throat> San Francisco maybe in the NFC Championship game later this year, that can consistently beat the Lions offensive line, which again is easier said than done. The Lions have put up 20 plus points in 15 straight games, and unless they turn the ball over multiple times in a game, which would be very unlion like as they are 7th in turnovers to start the year, you know they're going to put up points and you know they're going to be a problem. Problem. And in some cases, I think you'll see later this year, they'll win the games before they start. And it goes back to the leadership of Dan Campbell and getting everybody to buy in. The Lions are here and they are a problem. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. It's only about 25% of people watching are subscribed and it makes a big difference and is appreciated more than you guys know. And until next time, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.